It is the year 2017. Researchers in Ravid Straussman's lab at Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel are doing some experiments to study cancer drug resistance. They have taken human fibroblasts that they have isolated from a patient suffering from cancer and now they are co-culturing them with pancreatic and colorectal cancer cell lines. They found that the cancer cell lines suddenly became more resistant to the anti-cancer drug. The drug that they were using was gemcitabine. So the cancer was more resistant to the drug after it was co-cultured with fibroblasts isolated from a patient. Now this was not something new. Researchers have known this phenomenon that non-cancerous cells growing along with the tumor can provide resistance to a cancer. What was surprising was that when they used just the medium that was used to grow these fibroblasts, this was sufficient to induce drug resistance. So there was something in the medium which was not the cells that was providing the resistance. So what was it? Hello and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rupinder and I make educational science videos, especially on biology. I have a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology, so I have a little idea of what I am talking about. So getting back to the story. The researchers found that when they filtered the medium through a 0.45 micron filter, the resistance was lost. Now what is important about this 0.45 micron? The important detail here is that this filter will stop large cells like human cells as well as bacteria. It will not stop viruses, it will not stop proteins or any other small molecules. The resistance was lost. So there was either these fibroblasts or these bacteria or something similar to the size of bacteria that was giving the drugs resistance to the cancer. The researchers found that it was actually the bacteria that were responsible for the resistance especially a special class of bacteria known as gamma proteobacteria. The causative bacterium was found to be Mycoplasma hyorhinus. This bacterium actually helped the cancer become resistant to the drug. Now the interesting observation is that when the researchers injected mice having colorectal cancer with these bacteria, the cancers in those mice also became resistant. Now the interesting observation is that when the researchers gave an antibiotic ciprofloxacin along with the chemotherapy gemcitabine, the resistance disappeared. Now this was not a new phenomenon. Earlier studies in 2017 and 2012, most prominently from Matthew Mearson's lab at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute had also found another bacterium, Fusobacterium nucleatum in colon cancer samples. They had also found that this bacterium was found in both the primary cancer as well as the cancer that had spread to other parts of the body, so the metastatic cancer. And similarly, they had also found that when they injected these bacteria into mice having colorectal cancer, the cancer became resistant. And similarly, they also found that when they gave an antibiotic metronidazole to the mice, the resistance disappeared and the cancer progression was stopped. Now fast forward to 2020, another paper from Ravid Straussman's lab. Here they looked at 1500 different cancer samples from 7 different tissue types. They looked at brain cancer, melanoma, bone cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer and ovarian cancer. And they found that different cancers had different communities of bacteria growing in them. This was really surprising. And they also found that the composition was pretty consistent across different tissue types that the cancers had. Now the obvious question that you might be having is, should we just add antibiotics to regular chemotherapy? The answer is a little bit more complicated than that. Microbiome, as recent studies have shown, is a really complicated, complex community of bacteria, viruses and fungi growing on and inside human bodies. So taking a simple antibiotic may not be the best probable course of action. Because many of the members of bacteria, fungi and viruses growing inside our cells, they are either benign, so they are at least not harmful or neutral and sometimes they are even beneficial. So we don't know what are the other side effects of having an antibiotic along with the chemotherapy. So we have to be a little bit more cautious and more research has to be done. 
Now, if the troublesome bacteria are not enough, here are fungi. There have been many reports in recent years about different species of fungi growing inside cancer samples. One particular species of fungus known as Malassezia globosa has been found in association with pancreatic cancers. And the story is remarkably similar. Here also, when the researchers used antifungal compounds, for example, amphotericin B, the resistance to cancer disappeared. So there is something that these fungi and bacteria are doing while they are growing along with cancers that provides them drug resistance and probably they help them grow, although the story is not complete yet. Now, this is a very young area of science. Discoveries in this area are just beginning to pile up and we are getting a more clearer picture of what these microbiome communities are doing once inside cancers. Another interesting point that researchers have found is that these bacteria, when they are looked at inside cancer samples, they are found to be growing inside the cells. So it is not a very superficial association. But we don't have a causal link. There is no, there, of course, there is correlation. Bacteria and fungi are found along with cancer samples. But what are they doing there? What is the metabolic connections that they are making along with human cells? Maybe the environment provided by cancer cells is just beneficial for the overall growth of bacteria and fungi. And maybe that's just a random chance association. Maybe they are not helping them, but we don't know yet. It's an unfinished story and there are, of course, many more discoveries to come. It's a very hot and exciting area of cancer research. And maybe they will help us to enable more targeted chemotherapy, more targeted cancer treatment in the future. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I have linked the original research papers and news articles of this topic in the video description below. Till the next time we meet, remember, science is awesome.